What's going on, everyone? So the Philadelphia 76ers are in a tough position, right? They are currently the fifth seed after being pretty much the majority of the season as the three seed in the Eastern Conference, but the Cleveland Cavaliers, the New York Knicks have really surged lately. I mean, the Knicks are on a nine-game win streak. They've won like 20 of the last like 24 games or something crazy like that. Uh, they've been really good. And the Sixers are just in this tough spot. They're coming off of a win, yes, uh, but they haven't been as successful as they were to begin the year. Uh, Joel Embiid, there's conflicting reports. Like you get one report where it's like Joel Embiid tears his meniscus, he's out for you know who knows how long, and then another report that's like ah no, it's not really that bad. They don't really know how significant it is yet. Like let's wait and see. And point is, Joel Embiid's going to be out for some time. And the Sixers look, they have been a very good team basketball. Tyrese Maxey has been incredible. Um, but are, do they have enough currently to weather the storm with Joel Embiid, but also to contend even with Joel Embiid, right? I mean, again, the Knicks, they're playing some of the best basketball in the entire league right now. They are looking excellent. The Celtics are still the Celtics. Uh, you know, the Milwaukee Bucks have their concerns and their questions, but, you know, I still, Giannis and Dame, playoffs, it's going to be tough. Uh, also, now their head coach is Doc Rivers, so he is very familiar with the Sixers. So if you ran into him, he'd have a pretty good idea of how to like slow Joel Embiid down, things like that. And then even when you go out west, right, you got teams like the Clippers, the Nuggets, uh, you know, the Timberwolves, right, the 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 Thunder. Although the Timberwolves and the Thunder, if, me personally, I just don't see them coming out of the West. But regardless, there's several teams that I just think could really. Eliminate the 76ers is the point, right? But they are in a position to where they have an expiring contract with Tobias Harris, plus several others, Covington, things like that. And they have draft picks, and they could go and make a push to try to get a star. Uh, there is DeMar DeRozan, the Chicago Bulls. Uh, Chicago's kind of in this position where they want to trade Zach Levine. That's their main goal. But his contract, his injury issues right now, how many teams want to invest $40 million into a guy like a Zach Levine, and on top of that, give up assets and stuff. If Chicago's willing to kind of just give him away, uh, which there have been some reports that Chicago kind of would, then maybe, right? But even then, it's like, do the Sixers want to invest long-term into like a Zach Levine, where DeMar DeRozan just makes so much more sense, right? He's older he, which is something that is questionable, right? Like, how much longer, how much more does he have in the tank? Look, he's been spectacular, but we've seen lots of guys have, like, incredible seasons. Like, even, like, oh, near borderline MVP seasons in the next year, just boom, they hit that father time wall and, and take that drop. Uh, but DeMar DeRozan's game, I do believe, personally, will age well because he's not reliant on, like, crazy athleticism or explosiveness or anything like that. He's very crafty, very methodical. He's really good at just getting to his spots and an absolute mid-range assassin. He would be a welcome addition to the 76ers. And now we're seeing originally reports that, hey, the Sixers want to hold on to their draft picks. They kind of want to see what is available in the offseason, try to make a push for, you know, maybe like a Donovan Mitchell, something like that. But they're based again on reports hey, they may be willing to give up a first for DeMar DeRozan. Well, now we just recently got another report that says, ah, the Sixers aren't going to be very pursuant of DeMar DeRozan. So, again, where does it lie? DeMar DeRozan, personally, to me, makes a ton of sense for the uh, Philadelphia 76ers. Because here's the thing. You have Joel Embiid, who's the clear-cut number one. Tyrese Maxey is going to be your number two. You don't want to get somebody that's going to try to overtake Tyrese Maxey because he's your guy for now and the future. And I like DeMar DeRozan because he's a veteran guy. He's a fit. He'd come in. He'd basically be your third option at that point. But he'd bring that 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 veteranness. He'd bring that competitiveness. He'd be a nice guy to kind of help in those games where, if we're being honest, Joel Embiid in the playoffs can tend to disappear at times. And to have a guy like a DeMar DeRozan that you can trust and rely on and hit big shots, and he's not afraid of clutch moments. I mean, the last like handful of years, he's been in like the top five. Uh, two years ago, yeah, two years ago, not this year or last year, but two years ago, he was number one in the league in clutch. So to me, it's like you get a guy like that, 
guy that you can rely on, provide some just stability, give you another all-star level player, right? I don't think you're going to have to sell the farm for him. And if you can get him, I think that they should. Now, again, obviously it comes down to what is the cost. Because, look, there were reports that Chicago had no interest in trading uh, DeRozan. DeRozan has said publicly, what, twice now, that he's interested in staying with Chicago and that he wants to be with Chicago uh, and even resign Chicago or resign in Chicago. And the Bulls have even talked about how they um, want to, to extend him and give him long-term. Now, how much of that is just the company man answer, right? I mean, look at, like, Toronto. Toronto told, said publicly in an interview that they weren't going to trade DeMar DeRozan, and DeMar DeRozan is their guy, and he's Mr. Toronto, and two days later, he's traded. Now, granted, it was for Kawhi Leonard, but still, you get the point, right? It's one thing to say something. It's another thing to actually happen, and there is the risk and the fear of DeMar DeRozan leaving in the offseason. Right, especially if he can find you know greener pastures elsewhere. And Chicago's kind of like this middle of the pack team at best. Um, are they really winning? It's just it's a weird spot to be in. So personally, I think if you're the Sixers and you can go get Demar Derozan for a first, I do feel like it's worth the risk because yes, you may be waiting for Donovan Mitchell or something like that, and maybe he becomes available. But there's also the potential he doesn't. And now you're bad again, and there's no other star, and you say you lose in the first or second round again, you run the risk of, of Joel Embiid leaving, right? To me, I look at it as one in the hand is worth two in the bush, right? Like, yes, I understand that there's the allure of like, hey, what superstar is going to be next? Because every few months, a star becomes available, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there will be or one that makes sense or one that you can obtain or one that can play alongside Joel Embiid or Tyrese Maxey. Because you also got to keep in mind, like any guys that you're going to get, they're probably like any star. They're probably already the one or two option at bet or at worst. Right. So you got to get them involved. They have to make sense with Joel Embiid. They have to make sense with Tyrese Maxey. Even if Maxey's willing to kind of take a back seat and be your third option, that's fine. But still, like, you need pieces that fit. I think DeMar DeRozan would fit. He uh, could potentially be available right now. I don't believe that the Sixers would have pursued it or that information would have gotten out there if they didn't believe or had some type of dialogue about DeMar DeRozan. So, I don't know. I just think if you can get DeMar... I think you should. Again, if it's within reason, go get them. Go give up a first. Go give up whatever. You know, get a couple pieces. Or maybe even go get like, uh, maybe you can get a DeMar and an Alex Caruso and really just like, you know, go push your chips in. Alex Caruso would be an incredible uh, two-way player for you. He's shooting the three ball excellent. You could slot him. Like you could go with like DeMar at the three, right? And go like Maxi. Um, have, uh, yeah, go Maxi, Caruso, uh, uh, DeMar DeRozan, Joel Embiid, and then whoever you want at the four, right? Or DeMar at the four if you wanted to, because he's played a lot of four in his career. So do something, yeah, like a Tyrese Maxi, uh, Alex Caruso, if you get Caruso, uh, DeMar DeRozan, then you could go with like Nicholas Batum and um, Joel Embiid, or even if you just get DeMar, right? Like you'd be fine. Like, you could put the defense around them. You could go uh, Maxi, Beverly, DeMar, right? And, and have, like, the defensive units around him, defensive p- uh, pieces around him, Covington, all that stuff, whatever, right? Kelly Oubre, they, they have the pieces, they have the size, they have the length, they have the wing depth. I just like the idea of going and adding DeMar DeRozan. I think he'd be a proper fit. I think he'd fit alongside Joel Embiid and Maxi. And I think you could really make a push back up into the standings and, and potentially be a contender. Right. If it doesn't work out, uh, you know, you, you, it would suck to lose a first, but you know, at least you still have the salary flexibility to maybe go sign somebody or, you know, make a trade elsewhere. Or maybe you even sign and trade DeMar DeRozan, right? Like, you know, maybe the team that's going to lose a star is like, well, we don't like, we could get DeMar DeRozan. That'd be better than nothing. Maybe you're turning DeMar into uh, Donovan Mitchell or something. Right. And maybe, you know, a team like the Cavs is like, well, you know, at least DeMar DeRozan would give us some production of Donovan Mitchell, so maybe we get that, and maybe even be a better fit. You know, I, that's again, if you, I, I just feel like get the piece you know is available now, and then if something else becomes available later, figure it out. Come, come to it, find a way to get it done, 
right? Because you also run the risk of losing Joel Embiid. Right? I mean, there was already talks and murmurs, and he's he's been extremely patient and extremely just like, you know what, like, you know, hey, I went through the Ben Simmons thing, I went through the James Harden thing. I'm waiting, I'm trying to give you guys the opportunity to turn this around so I can win a championship or whatever, and you guys are, you know, dragging your feet. Now I got, what, another year? Uh, you know, I'm having all these injuries, I'm having all these issues, like, it becomes a real problem, but... Anyway, again, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Do you want to see uh, the Sixers go and trade for DeMar DeRozan? Do you think the Sixers, no, stay away from DeMar DeRozan, go look for another piece, go look for another trade elsewhere? Again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I love to hear it, so let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate you all. See you in the next one. Thank you.